everyone, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing, and I'm getting ready to stitch out What's the Buzz keychain. This is the freebie design that you get when you sign up for Digital Dealers Exclusive Collection number three. So this is their collection from 2024. Um, you cannot purchase this design separately. When you purchase Digital Dealer Club, um, that's what we call it at our store. Uh, your retailer should send this to you for free as a bonus and a thank you for signing up. And the other great thing about this is Kimberbell has kitted it. So your kits for this come from your retailer. They do not kit these projects for us. Um, so we kit it for you. However, they did kit this one, which I think is so great. It's only $4.99. Comes with all of uh, the different fabrics. Um, in this case, leather and all the little fun little parts. Um, and uh, all you have to do is you have to add your stabilizer and your topper. You should have wash away topper for this and some dissolve away stabilizer and thread. And these are some of the other things you're, you're going to need, your usual cutting tools. Um, you're going to need a matching bobbin in gold, brown, and white. There is going to be some sewing, and we're gonna, I'm going to be doing it with my compact dual feed walking foot. This is, I call this one the little butt one, because the other one had kind of a bigger butt that would like... <laughs> Anyways, this is the compact one. I love this foot. And the sole I'm going to use to sew my stuff together is going to be the open toe. Um, I'm using a 5x7 hoop. You're going to see in your instructions, this asks you to do two different hoopings. But why do two different hoopings can, when you can do one? So I already loaded the design just to make sure it fits. But it's going to fit well with just putting this design in that's going to be the little tag and then we're going to be uh stitching out the little holder too and they fit no problem same hooping in the five by seven hoop so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to turn to the instructions right here i have everything all put together and part one so it says we're completing this in three parts number one stitching the b tag number two stitching the lip balm holder i said stitch both in the five by seven and number three is assembling the keychain with all those cute little findings so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and hoop my wash away stabilizer in my five by seven hoop And when I am pre-cutting, when we pre-cut for our kits and we pre-cut stabilizer, we cut our stabilizer nine inches by nine inches off a 12 inch roll is normally what we'll do. Okay, once you have it in your hoop, you don't want it to have all of these little wrinkles. Sorry, let me get that back a little bit. Just pull in, inward, not upward, inward. Don't pull too hard because this stuff will rip. Okay, and that's pretty good. I'm going to take this on over to the machine. All right, so I'm going to go into embroidery, my pocket. I have, I use this, and I just plug it into my lower USB. I put all of my digital dealers on that gray little USB, and it's in my lower one, so I'm going to touch this button right here. And mine are down at the bottom, and I am doing what's the buzz keychain. My embroidery files, I pulled out just my PES, and I'm gonna load this one first and set. It's a good idea to set your hoop size so you know how much room you have. To do that, you're gonna go to your settings button. I'm using my five by seven. It's already set there on, um, on the page, and I'm gonna take this one. I'm just gonna drag them down to the lower right and what I do is I usually use my finger for general positioning. And then if I really want it precise, I'll go move and I'll use the arrows for precise positioning. That's good. I'm close to the edge. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to add. So I'm going to go ahead and touch my add button. I'm going to go back to my USB. But you have a choice here. You could add from your machine, from the top USB port, the lower one, SD card, Bluetooth, the cloud. So I'm just going to go here, 
Let's go back to, whoops, what's the buzz? And now I'm going to add the, 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 that's the lip balm holder. So I'm going to set that. I'm going to take it, I'm going to flip it. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go edit, rotate 90 degrees. Oh, look, it would fit in that way too if you wanted to do it that way. Um, 90 degrees and take it and just put it up here because you're going to have some applique, applique pieces and you don't want them like totally covering over the other part. We could easily put it up here at the top too if we wanted to do that. Should we do that? I didn't realize that it was going to, that's your center button. If this is anywhere on the page and you hit that and it, we're in, um, these are your move keys too. Move and rotate come up together. If you hit this, it goes right to the center. I'm going to scoot them all the way up to the top. And take that, rotate it 90. And that way, I'm sure that my applique pieces aren't going to be touching. Or maybe you wanted to do a whole bunch of these. You could probably uh, fit in another. Let's see how many we could fit in. We'll just do this for giggles, right? Um, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to end up throwing these away, but I'm going to touch this because I want to make a copy. There we go. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to rotate it and scoot it down. I guess we didn't have to do that. And then I wonder if I take this one, edit, make a copy, rotate it, scoot it up. Oh, look at that. So we could easily do two sets, but I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm going to just go, okay, touch the ones I want to get rid of. This one, delete. This one, delete. And now I'll just move this right here. I'll leave that one up there and we'll go embroidery. There's a little mini lesson on rotating, moving, centering, and all of that stuff. Okay, I am going to do these one at a time. I could color group. And probably the applique and all of that would be done all at the same time. But let's go ahead and just do this one at a time. Just make sure that we don't get anything in the way and it comes out right. Um, it'll be the easiest. And you can see what's going on. First thing it wants us to do is it wants us to do, in this case, uh, Kimberbell usually does turquoise is your placement line. Orange is your tack down line. So it's saying color doesn't make a difference here. And, um, but the first color that does make a difference is going to be the gold. So that's what I'm going to put in. Color doesn't make a difference right now. If you're new to my videos, I like to sing. I, I just got the music in me. That's what I would say. I got the music in me and sometimes it needs to come out. Okay, placement stitch. We're gonna be placing down your um, white piece of B tag leather. Go ahead and open up our handy dandy little kit. I've been waiting for the kits. I ordered our kits for our store weeks ago. And I think um, there's been some, I don't know what's going on, but Still haven't gotten them. I'm trying to be patient. I would be patient because I, you know, whatever. But I'm impatient because I know you guys are, you guys want them. So then I get super impatient. Okay, I'm opening up my little kit here with all the goodies in it. Here's like a little ring. Oh, here's my findings. Let's just put them right there. Ooh. Now, if you play it smart, you might be able to get, multi, you know, they always have their stuff cut really large, usually. I'm gonna get my spray tent. Okay, this is my dime spray tent that I love. And uh, you just put a piece of cardboard in there and this thing pops up like a little tent. And I like it because I spray in here and it, it, you know, keeps the aerosol in there. And it looks like both pieces of my leather are the same size. So 
So I'm just going to go ahead and lay one down in here. This um, spray, I use Ganol KK100. Sometimes it sweats through. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to put a light spray on here. Wait, I'm going to spray here just to make sure my finger's working. Okay, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and center it over this spot and lay it down. I'm not going to go too far. I'm peeking underneath, making sure I cover the whole thing. And then what does it say it wants us to do next? It says, place B-tag leather right side up, covering the placement line, tape in place. If you are going to tape, this is my favorite tape. It's transport tape, it's medical tape, and it's sticky. I love it. Stitch the tag down trim line. Do not trim the leather at this time and remove the tape. I'm just going to go ahead and hit start because it says color doesn't make a difference. So go ahead and hit that. And then we're going to place the tag wash away topping over the hexagonal part. So it looks like you want your topper just over this part right here. So my orientation is going to be a little bit different than what you're going to see in the instructions. I love just, I'm not, I never cut it to the sizes they asked me to because I just, there's so much waste. So I'm just going to lay it down right there over the hexagonal part. And um, it wants you to stitch the honeycomb design and trim the tail ends. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. And then once it starts stitching, I'm just going to lift my hand away and then this should be fine. Now, the reason we're using the topper is to keep those stitches from bedding down into the leather and keeping it up on top. And the reason you want to use a wash away is that's like a lot of little itty bitty pieces and you can just take like a Q-tip later on and just wash it away. Isn't that, oh, that must be the bee wings. I was like, that doesn't look um, symmetrical. Now it says trim the, uh, it wants you to cut the tails. I'm not seeing any. And it says stitch the wing fill, trim the t thread tails. And it wants you to use white. So I'm going to go ahead and take out my gold thread. I'm going to put my white in. These are the colors I'm using. So white, black, this right here is medium brown and sand, which is like kind of the perfect gold. shuffling my thread around on my thread stand. I use a 10 thread spool stand and like more than anything, it's like an organizer for me. It keeps my threads organized. Here, I'll give you a peek right here. Okay, um, go ahead and stitch the wing fell. Would it look really pretty if you put mylar underneath that, don't you think? Let me see how filled it is. Oh, pretty filled. You wouldn't see it. I love that it's a uh, like you wouldn't know unless you looked at it closely but due to the way they like turn like the stitches in which direction they go it it gives you texture okay we're gonna put in the gray and I want to show you how I take my thread out so if you look right here I'm not gonna pull back you need to make sure your foot is up right here and this is open you're just gonna unthread it to right here right here, number two, and it just comes right out. So that is how I unthread my thread. I don't pull back, but I don't cut it and pull um, from the needle either. That just seems like a waste to me. 
I am, I just, I have such a tough time with waste. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle again and we're gonna stitch body one fill. Here we go. I don't see any threads that I need to trim, but if you see those, they want you to trim after each uh, stitch out. And get your black ready. Black's next. We're gonna go ahead and do the body, or the outline. Okay, let's switch out. I'm taking out my sand. We're gonna put in black. I actually have a black spool that I've been trying to use up. Let me grab it. When I was going through my threads, I had like five half used up things, a black thread. And I think I'm down to like two. Okay, let's get that tail. And now it's gonna stitch the outline stitch. Hang on one second. This unspooled and there is a knot. Glad I caught that. That wouldn't have been fun. Okay, there we go. Oh, there is a big tail that I'm gonna have to trim. After we do the outline, we're gonna trim. Oh, look at, he got, I should have stopped him, right? I gotta get that black thread out of there. Um, we're gonna put the other piece of white leather on the back side, and we are going to tape that down, and then we'll do, I think, the final stitch out. They call it the final outline. You're gonna cut that bottom horizontal thread right there. That's gonna separate the leg, so don't worry about that. All right, change that out. I'm gonna trim up some of those threads right now. I should have should have stopped and trimmed that one black thread that you're seeing all curled under. But we'll just trim it now. I need my precision tweezers. And, or you know what? Let's get my hook snips. I love these. These have that little hook so you can just hook it under and just snip. 
And then I'm gonna grab my precision plate tweezers because I find that's helpful to kind of pull the thread up and then get right at the butt base. Oh my God, he went everywhere. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get him. Let's see. That is gonna be the biggest nuisance thread. I'm gonna move this camera just a little bit so it's not quite in my way. And this little guy is that same thread. Maybe he'll just come up. There, got him. Okay, he's out, he's looking good. My little bumblebee's looking cute and fine. And we're ready to go on to the next step, which is to put the back piece on. Um, let me see if it wants you to remove the topping. It says remove the hoop from the machine, turn the hoop to the back, to the back, right there. And it wants you to put down, now make sure like there's a, the smoother side is the right side. You're just gonna cover that over, grab your tape. I like to tape in these cases because, um, I mean, look how easy it is to rip this transport tape. You just, I love my paper tape, but I really love my transport tape. You don't want these corners to turn under. So I'm gonna put those all down. I'm gonna swing it back to the right side. And then it says, place the remaining B tag leather right side, right side up covering in the placement line stitched in direction step three tape the corners change the bobbin thread to match the top thread i already have white in my bobbin so i'm good to go i'm going to go ahead and slide this on and it says stitch the final outline let me get my white thread threaded if you are using a thread stand like if you're going to be using the thread stand you do go up to the very oh i don't don't look at my messy sewing room uh you go up to the thread stand and then you do go into this little hook and then you thread it like you normally would thread it. So I'm gonna go behind here, down, around, back, and behind guide number six. Pull it in, and then you're good. I really need, my sewing room was so neat once I did my makeover, and then I kinda let it go, working on it. Okay. We're doing our final stitch out. Stitch the final outline. Here we go. I'm just holding that down so it doesn't flip back the topper. Not that that would really matter. Okay, and then we're going to, um, the directions say, it says, uh, remove the project from the hoop, remove all the tape, and tear away the excess topping. I'm gonna start with the excess topping. And then we have this big old piece. I'm gonna use this when I do the rest of it. And, uh, and I'm gonna use a Q-tip to get off the rest of this topping. So I'm just gonna leave that for right now. Trim the leather and stabilizer on the trimming line stitched in 
uh, direction step five, and that's going to be what I did in um, gold. So that's the gold outline that we're going to be trimming. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to do that part later. So we're going to go ahead and leave it just like it is right now. And we're going to stitch out the other part because I'm not going to cut this out of the hoop. I'm just going to save it and do that one hooping. Let's go ahead and do the other part because that stitch out is totally done. So it's already here and ready to go. So let's go ahead and turn our page and we're gonna do that stitch out. We're gonna go to page number seven and it says hoop the wash away. We were already hooped. Otherwise, if you're gonna do it as per these instructions, you're gonna do one hooping in the four by four hoop and one hooping in the five by seven. And I think if you do, uh, you do two hoopings in the five by seven, make multiples of them. Do your four by four and do like two or three in the hoop and then do your um, five by seven and do like two or three. I don't think you could fit four. You actually might be able to. I think you'd be able to fit three, no problem. Okay, so we're already hooped. This step says load what's the buzz lip balm holder embroidery file in the machine. Let's go ahead and do, oh, we already did that too. It's already on our screen. And it st says stitch the holder placement line directly on the stabilizer. Um, color doesn't make a difference. First time color is going to make a difference is, let's look at our instructions here, 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 right here. And that's where we're going to be using gold. So we're going to be using gold. So let me go ahead and put my gold back in. Hope this isn't confusing for you. We're just going to do all that put together an assembly later. Okay, let's stitch it out. I have a red light. Why? This. That's like, oh wait, look at, I still have a red light. Oh my, cause my hoop's not on. There we go. Okay, green light. Now it's gonna want you to put down one of your pieces, a leather, one of the big pieces. You have two big pieces, one little piece. Grab that big piece. I'm gonna give mine a shot of spray in my spray tent. And then it says, um, remove the hoop from the machine, turn the hoop to the back and place one holder base leather right side up covering the placement line, tape the corners, and then turn to the front. So I was supposed to put that on uh, after. Here, I'm just going to grab it. So we're going to take this, we're going to turn it over, we're going to put this piece of leather right down here, check and make sure you're covering over those stitched marks, and you are. I'm just going to use these pieces. I'm taking it from the other one. Why not? It's transport. It's sticky. Has lots of life. Okay, now we're going to turn it to this side. And you can confirm that you covered over that whole stitch line. And now I'm going to lay this down. And he's taped... Or he's sprayed, so I don't have to worry about it. No, he's sticking up on the edges, but that's totally fine. Um, then it says, stitch the holder tack down line. Color doesn't make a difference. A contrasting color would be nice because this is going to be, I think this is going to be the trim line and pocket placement marks. Do not trim your leather at this time. That was step number six. Step number seven says to change the bobbin thread to match the top thread, stitch the honeycomb design and trim your thread tails, which I'm going to do because I should have done it last time. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put gold in. Oh, 
I love my bobbin boats. If you don't have a bobbin boat, you should get them. I put all the colors that I'm using for the project right in there. And they're, it's nice because the it's snug, so you could shake it and the bobbins aren't going to fall out and it holds the bobbin thread in place. It's a great stocking stuffer. Okay, let's slide that under. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't supposed to put down um, the other piece yet. This is a really quick and easy project too. So if you stitch a whole bunch out at once, I would definitely do multiples at a time. tails to trim so I'm just gonna leave it it says remove that we're on step number eight it says remove the hoop from the machine turn the hoop to the back place one holder pocket leather right side up so here's my pocket holder leather and these are your placement marks do you see them right here these little stitches that are sticking out I want you to place this I don't know if I have a prettier piece prettier direction and we are on the back side. I'm going to put it up just above those. Um, turn the hoop to the back. Yeah, it wants you to turn the hoop to the back. I wonder if it wants you to trim these threads because there's a lot of them. I don't think it told us to... But I'm starting to think, oh, is the wrong side the right side? So I'll just trim them up a little bit so they're not totally obnoxious. Okay. Okay, place one leather pocket right side up with top edge aligned with the placement marks stitched in direction six and tape the corners. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right there and that right there. We're gonna tape the corners. This isn't really gonna... Let me get a little more tape. Tape those down. Turn the hoop to the front. There we go, hoop to the front. And then it says, uh, cover the top half, half of the design, that would be this part right here, with the wash away. So we're gonna put this on. You know who loves lip balm? My daughter. Like, you will never, she loves Burt's Bees lip balm. Like, it's like as though her life depended on it. That's, she loves it. So I'm going to make this for Violet. Okay, I'm just going to hold it here. I'm going to slide my hoop on. I'm not going to tape it. And then it says, uh, cover the top half of the design with wash away stabilizer as shown to support the stitches. Tape in place close to the trim line as shown. This will prevent the presser foot from catching on the stabilizer. So it wants you to be close to the trim line. 
I'm not really seeing where it's close to the trim line. I'm just gonna watch that foot. I'm gonna watch that foot and just make sure it doesn't get caught. And when I'm doing that, I'll keep my finger here on the start stop button. Oh, holy cow. I did not look at thread color. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna cut. Change the bobbin thread to match the top thread and stitch out the final outline. Sorry guys. We'll have to put a little break in the video that you should. And this is where I'm gonna do the brown. This is medium brown and it's like a really good color for the leather. And I'm gonna put it in the top too. And then we're stitching the final outline. Okay, I'm gonna go back to where that started. To do that, you're just gonna come over here. This is where you go backwards and forward stitches. This goes forward. This will take me to the beginning of the stitch out we're in right now. So I'm gonna touch that and okay. You know, and there, the screen shows it in black. I'm not doing it in black. I'm gonna do it in this color. And look, I'm gonna stop right there because I didn't stop before and I had that one thread that was dragged all around. I want him out of there. Okay. Right here is where if he gets caught, this is where it would be. You could kind of stop it and do it or else I'm just doing that. Trim your thread tails. It says turn the hoop to the back. So let's go ahead and take this out. Turn the hoop to the back. And then it says, uh, carefully clip any remaining thread tails from the project and remove the project from the hoop. So I have some final thread tails for sure. These all kind of swept under and around. And let's go ahead and take it to my little prepping area. So it says, remove the project from the hoop, remove the tape, turn the project to the side, without the pocket, that's the side. Trim the two layers of leather and stabilizer on the trim line. I'm gonna remove all of this too. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter, my rotating mat. Not my rotary. Well, I am going to use a rotary cutter too. I'll 
use a small ruler and stitch the final thread, turn the hoop to the back, remove the project from the hoop, turn the hoop to the front and trim the two layers of leather and stabilizer on the trimming line stitched out in direction step six, which is gonna be this one, which is gonna be the gold. So we're gonna trim that gold right off. You don't want to get too close, so I'm not going all the way. I'm going to do the rest with just a pair of scissors. So I'm going to use my, I mean, I have lots of favorite straight scissors. I love my um, Gingers. I have another pair of this that are made by Kai, and then I love my perfect scissors. So I think I'm going to go perfect scissors today. And right on that line. And it's a little thick there. Let's do these. Okay, any of these loose threads you can kind of just pull inward and they should come out. And that looks pretty good. You don't want to scratch your leather, so be careful. There we go. All right, this piece is trimmed up. Um, we're going to gently rinse the top half of the project to remove the excess stabilizer, remove excess water with a paper towel, and use a wet cotton swab to dissolve any remaining stabilizer along the edges of the project. And, um, you know, you can't really see that much, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. I might take a wet swab because I'm going to need it for this part for sure. Okay, let's do this one now. Let me clean this area up. I mean, and this stuff, he might rip away too. Sometimes I just do that. You're just all away. Sometimes I'll just kind of rip it away. Okay, for this one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I was getting hot in here. I'm going to go ahead and let me just cut the easy edges. I'm going just inside of that stitch line. Okay. 
I'm just going to do that. Let's do the rest with our scissors. I'm going to go uh, to my bathroom and just kind of rinse that off. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am all rinsed off. What it wants me to do, and I pulled away all those little threads, it wants you to go ahead and take your jump ring. Let's see. That's going to be this one right here. Is this the jump ring? I think this is the jump ring. These are my findings. I think this is going to be the key ring. Let's look at the final picture and make sure we're grabbing the right stuff. Tidy up. I don't like that word. <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to, each of these is going to get one of the jump rings. So these are the two jump rings that you have. So we're going to take this one, slip them on. And this is going to get folded around, should look like this, just like the picture right here. And we're going to take this and fold it down to the back and we're going to clip it with a wonder clip. Turn the project to the back, fold the tag tab over, sorry, I'm filming on my pop up. Turn this over as indicated and clipped, clip into place. So we want this to kind of overlap this, just like that. And we are gonna clip it into place just to hold it, just like that. Oh my God, this is so cute. Okay, with the other one, we are going to grab the other piece and I should probably use that Q-tip, but I'm gonna grab my jump ring, turn the project to the side with the pocket. This is the side with my pocket. We're gonna put this over here. Slide the jump ring onto the leather tab halfway down the length. Turn the project to the side without the pocket. Fold the tag tab over, aligning the final outline stitches as shown. So we're gonna align like this row of stitching right here with this row of stitching right there. That looks pretty good. And if it's off a little bit, that's okay. Grab another wonder clip and clip it into place. Look at this is some messy threads, got it. That looks like it's lined up pretty well. Okay, all right. Uh, turn the project to the side with the pocket. Be sure the bobbin thread and top thread of your sewing machine match the thread. We're going to go ahead and stitch that down right there. I still have my brown in there, so it's perfect. I'll stitch this down, and then I'm going to stitch this down with the white. Let's go to the machine. Okay, so we need to go ahead and switch the machine over. So I'm going to say, okay, home button takes us out of this screen, and I'm going to go sewing. And I want just a straight center stitch, which is stitch 103. I'm going to leave it, whoops, I'm going to leave it at stitch length of 2.5. Let's change out our foot. If you do not have one of these, you need it. This is an advanced screwdriver. I'm going to put my foot up as high as it goes. It's great because it just slips onto that screw and you don't have to worry about it sliding on or off. If your screw is loose enough for you to undo by hand. That is way too loose, and that's when you're going to have your foot shake off in the middle of an embroidery or at an impromptu time, and it scares you. Okay, this is going to slide over this screw right here from the back. Hand tighten it. 
plug it in. Make sure you plug it in the back or else it doesn't work. Every once in a while I'll forget and I'll be like, this is the worst foot ever. And then tighten it a little bit more. Don't crank it. There. But you always want to tighten it a little bit more and never just hand tighten. Okay, I am set up with a open toe foot. That way I can see exactly where I'm going. I'm going to sew it from this side. Oh, actually, we want it to be on the pretty side, don't we? Let's see what they recommend. In the instructions, turn the project to the side with the pocket. Be sure the bobbin thread and top thread of your sewing machine match. Um, use the stitch from the final outline in the directions using a sewing machine. Sew the tab down, stitch along the final outline stitch as indicated. Be sure to back stitch. Okay. So we're going to unclip from this side. This, you want him all the way out of the way. And we're going to just stitch along. This is when I'll hand, I still roll my hand well every once in a while, just to make sure I'm right where I want to be. That looks good. And they want you to back stitch. Okay, here we go. You could do the back stitch in place too if you wanted. Might need a little assistance. It's thick. Oop, I don't want it to go any further. I'll be off. And this one is stitched down. Let's see how well we did in the back. So you stitched it along this line. I may trim some of those threads up a little bit. Um, but look how cute it looks from the back side. And I think I did a pretty good job. Let's trim those threads and throw them on the ground. I just vacuumed, so everything looks good. And, uh, you know, I think I have a chapstick over here. I was putting some on. Or you know what else this would be great for? How about just a USB? Oh my goodness, I think that would be perfect. Can you grab a USB? What if this was your USB holder and you always had it with you, right? Because how many times have you needed a USB? You're like, oh darn it, I wish I brought my USB. Okay, I'm gonna change out my thread to white because now we're gonna sew down the uh, B tag. This is the first time I've stitched in 10 days. I had, um, I had a treatment on basically 10 days ago and I have been laid out. Every day I woke up and went, oh my goodness, am I gonna feel better today? And nope. So it's nice being able to, so I've come down into my sewing room a couple of times and thought about it, but I was not able to make it happen. And I really thought I was like, oh, I'm gonna be able to get so much done. Nope. Okay, white thread now. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We're going to stitch from the front side, making sure this is covering that line. It looks good. Looks a little low. There we go. Okay. I'm going to hand roll my needle in for the start. And you know what I'm going to do too is I'm going to set this up. Sorry, my angle's not right. This is the stitch I want, lock in place. That has the little dot on the top. This one, the line next to the line means forward and back locking. This means lock in place with the little dot on the top. However, if you want it to do that, you also have to touch this button down here. That is your locking button. And this is cut after lock. That means... Once you lock it on the other side, it's gonna automatically cut it. So I would go ahead and do stitch 104, locking stitch, cut after lock. I'm gonna hand roll, and I'm gonna pull that thread out so I don't have this big loop. Ah, oh, that's close, right? Let me move it just, there we go. Okay, lock in place. Wait a minute. 
to that lock in place. Oh yeah. Okay, there, it locked in place. And then when it gets to the last stitch right here, I'm gonna hit, you can hit this button right here, which will lock in place. And then you're gonna hear it cut. Perfect, there we go. Let's cut that thread. There's your little mini lesson with your locking stitch. I'm surprised though how many times, um, I don't teach a lot of classes anymore like the user classes, I used to, but I'm surprised at how many people uh, don't quite understand how, and I'm off a little bit, but who cares because it's white, right? And it looks so cute from the front, so who cares? Okay, let's go ahead and finish the whole thing up. Okay, let me grab all my goodies. I did have a chapstick. I was putting it on earlier. It was my Burt's Bees and I had stolen it from Violet. She has so many of them. Okay. Um, book. So... Now we're gonna put the key ring on the jump ring. Here is the key ring, it's a little bigger and beefier. I like, do you see that, the little split? I'm gonna turn that down to the underside where you can't really see it. Okay, there's my key ring, whoops. Okay, there's that. Now I'm gonna put this one on too. Should I have them both facing in the same direction? Right, I think so. I don't know if this is gonna come out right. Let's see. Oh yeah, look how cute that looks. And then we're gonna put the tassel on. The tassel on the little hook. Oh, I wonder if we should have put the tassel on in between. Okay, let's see, there we go. And we'll put this on too. And there we go. We have our, our little bumblebee chapstick holder or USB holder with the little clip on. That is what's what's the buzz. And that is your digital dealer bonus CD for 2024. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.